you a manager or are you a leader? Or are you both? It's an important question if you plan on being a successful small business person. Thanks for watching us here on Next Biz Success. My name is Lynn Hinderocker, and my guest today on NBS is Janet Walker. She's a HR expert and management mm -hmm. consultant. Mm -hmm. She uh, has her own firm called Walker & Associates. So you're an entrepreneur as well. I am. And uh, we're so happy to have you with us. I want to ask, about, uh, talk to you about this, this notion of management versus leadership. Are they really different or are they the same thing? They're, they're, they're different. Uh, a manager can be a leader and a leader can be a manager, but there's, there's different purposes for, for each characteristic. And a manager typically is responsible for managing the resources. The, they're the steward of the resources for the organization, okay. I mean, be, it, be it the facility, be it the people and the talent that they have. And sure. It's knowing how to, how to maximize all those resources that you've been given. Okay. A leader, uh, not to, by contrast, is someone who they have charisma, uh, and, and I'm not I'm not talking flamboyant personality, but but it's somebody that you know you want to follow them. You know you would take a bullet for them. It's someone who is <coughs> able to create a vision and yeah. spell it out, and 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 that's what r gets the employee right. committed to following that particular leader. It has yeah. nothing to do with managing the resources, okay. but, it's, but it's that emotional connection. You know, a lot of small business people will say, you know, I know how to leverage the skills of my individual employees to kind of get things done. I got that piece. It's part of the administration function, and I can say, hey, you know, Harry, he's good at this. We'll have him go do that. The leadership piece is more ideals, it's abstract, it's inspirational. It's a little harder for a lot of uh, uh, small business owners to get their arms around that. What, we, what can we tell those people? Do they need a little coaching or counseling or do they need uh, just to be more introspective about what the essence of what they are doing is? Uh, got any quick suggestions there? Yeah, I, I think uh, don't be afraid to tell your stories. Tell about how you started the company, what inspired you to create the company that they're now a part of. And, yeah, and stories yeah. are really what uh, what gets people excited. Yeah. Uh, talk about your dreams and your vision and, and, and where the company is going to. Yeah. And that's, you know, people can attach, and again, it's, it's, it's an emotional, it's a commitment piece, is, right. piece but we're not going to attach emotion to 5% growth or 10% growth, but what's that growth going to do for us and, and where do we come from that, that we should be excited about that? Right, and what's, where's the linkage between corporate growth and evolution mm -hmm. and my personal growth and evolution as a professional, even as a human mm -hmm. being? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's, that's good stuff. Yeah. I appreciate and, and, that. And I think the, the business owners, the, 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 this, these visionaries who started this company, yeah. this is second nature to them. It's not to the other people. So, so if you, if don't think that they know it automatically. Tell your stories. I can't tell you how many uh, CEOs I've spoken to or small business owners, and they say, you know, I'm passionate. I still love my business after all these years. What's the matter with these other people? Yeah. Why don't they have the passion and embrace what I've uh, been trying to do around here? Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it's a struggle, you know. Listen, it, you know, speaking about maxims and small business uh, uh, values and so on. I know culture is very much a part of the HR mm -hmm. background that you have and cultural values. When I start to talk about cultural values, people start to yawn, you know, oh yeah, I've heard about all that, value, integrity, excellence, hard work, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we talk about it once a week uh, or maybe once a month at the corporate meeting. But there's another piece, isn't there, and that is the organizational style. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. What's mm -hmm. the difference between organizational style and culture? Well, I, I, there really shouldn't be a difference, but there is. And, and the, the culture, what we've, unfortunately, what we've done when it comes to the cultural values is, is we've gone through this exercise and we've written out these, you know, three or four or 20 values that the organization has. Yeah, hopefully not 20, by the way. Exactly, exactly. You know, you know fewer is better. Uh, and then it becomes a piece of paper and it becomes stagnant and we don't do anything with it. Yeah. But what it, what it is, where, where, it, where it should translate into the organizational style is this is how we do things here. What is it like to be here? Yeah. Uh, what I like to uh, challenge my, my clients with is saying, if you were to read about your success yeah. in uh, a Harvard Business Journal or a Fast Company or, or something sure. like that, sure. What do you want them saying about you? What stories do you want them talking about? And, and that really is especially your, details. The, right? the details that that is the um, uh, the behavior, the behaviors, and the examples of things. And do you like? Um, do you say you have an open door policy, but you know you have to go through my secretary to get to me to to yeah. talk to me? Um, and those are the, that's the style piece that is a disconnect with what you're saying is your value. And how do you, but, how do you use the the uh, interviewing process to screen out people? Uh, or to identify people that definitely will love the operating style of the mm -hmm, company mm -hmm. or definitely won't like 
I mean, that is a huge question mark, and it gets in the way of a lot of good hires. It does. And, and I, number one is you have to be aware what it is, because, like, again, intuitively, we just go through our day, and we don't even think about what it is we're doing. We don't really know our own individual operating style. Right. That's right. the key right I, there. Yes. And so, so, so do, I, do I like, how do I like interacting with people and just getting some clarity around that? And then I, you know, I just write up front with the individual right. um, in the interview process around this company, this is what we do. Yeah. You know, this, this, and this. Sure. This is how we operate and treat each other. You know, when we talk to entrepreneurs and people that are in a growth phase with their small business, a lot of them are go, go, go kinds of people. If you ask them the kind of employee they want, I, I hear two answers. Mm -hmm. One is, oh, I want somebody who's independent and self-reliant and as motivated as me and will just can find the problem, go get it done, and I don't have to worry about it. Right. Then there's the other answer, and we hear a lot of this, which is, you know what, I live a busy life. I don't want to have everybody reinventing everything every day. I just want clarity. They should come in, do the job they get hired to do, get the paycheck and go home, not try to reinvent the wheel every day. Mm -hmm. It's chaotic enough around the office <laughs> the way it right, is. Right. Now, how do we know what kind of a boss we are so that we can choose, you know, those two, one of those two kinds of people? Well, if you've never hired anybody, you may not know right off, but, but if you can have some, take some time to reflect, do I like to control things? Yeah. And that's not good or bad. Yeah. It's just, you know, do I like to control how this is going to go? Because this is my baby. Yeah. This is, the, this is I, I lost sleep over this. I, sure, sure. I uh, uh, risked my investments, my family well-being. Right. How much are you willing to uh, um, let go of the reins, so to speak, in the direction? Right. Right. And so if you want to control it, then, you, you, then don't, you need to be very careful when you're hiring somebody that has, uh, uh, you say, I want you to be a go-getter, an innovator, you know, whatever. Uh, because maybe you don't want that completely. You got you got to bridge. Right. How much of that do you want? How much are you willing to risk? Versus if you truly are willing to um, let go and, and let them and trust them to come come uh, back to you. Right. That's a, that's a hard thing to know it about is. yourself. It is. Very. It requires a certain degree of uh, of awareness, and you have to be able to articulate your expectations. And in the end, Janet, just very quickly, people have to be able to define success, don't mm -hmm. they? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's hard to get done, though. Actually, people have varying ideas of what success really means. You bet. Thank you, Janet Walker. We appreciate you joining us here on Next Best Success and this elusive conundrum of the right person and the right situation, the right rewards, not an easy thing to figure right. out. So we appreciate your uh, cooperation here. People are the key. You've got to have the right ones, and it's not an easy thing to how to figure out to get the right person in the right slot at the right time in your career and to know the kind of person that you really are, whether you're a good boss or you need a little bit extra help. Thanks for watching Next Biz Success. My name is Lynn Hinderocker. Keep on going and keep on growing.